Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Get started our show. But first, I want to thank uh, Bill Allen last week for taking over the show. I had to go down to Tampa to do a workshop and all. And, and uh, he just stepped right in, and we didn't miss a beat. I'm just glad to have, appreciate him doing that, and always uh, comfortable to have somebody to depend on when, when you can't quite make the show. Because we do so many shows, I instead of putting in reruns, I like to keep it going pretty fresh, and uh, the guests we had on were good, and I just uh, really appreciate that, Bill. Secondly, but more, more importantly, I want to give my wife a happy birthday shout-out this morning. Happy birthday, Gail. My beautiful wife, who we will not have Panhandle Outdoors without her help. And uh, she's just tremendous help to me and behind the scenes and getting everything ready, doing my outline for me and the river readings and all, all kind of editing and everything. It's just, uh, just an enormous amount of work, and I appreciate it. I love you, and happy birthday. We're going to have a big party this afternoon, and we we'll eat all that ice cream and cake we want. All right. Now, let's get started by the weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. It's going to be warm today, 89 degrees. Low is 75, and water temperature has been hanging in there at 83 degrees. Uh, a lot of bait fish starting to show up, and uh, good water temperature. The river reading, speaking of the uh, river readings, we have the Apalachicola now. It's been bouncing up there uh, pretty high. We rode over it a couple times this past uh, week, and it's uh, looking good. 8.4 uh, It's pretty high, but it's, you know, get them back in those sloughs, and it, uh, you're getting ready for July 4th fishing. A lot of y'all are. It looks like it's going to be some good uh, backwater fishing. Okay, the chalked at your carabill got up last week, but it's, it's dropped down to a 4.2. It looks like it's going to stay steady around a 4.2. So it's in, uh, in good shape right there, chalked at your river. Now, the tide, let's take a look at our tide readings brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Our high tide this morning is at 11.08 a.m. Today's the 25th. We have some really strong tides today. Now, they're going to taper on off for the weekend, but we're looking at some really strong tides uh, 11 or 8 this morning and a low tonight at 9.50. We're looking at a, a right at 1.9 foot range today. So really good, strong tidal flow. And a marine forecast, uh, uh, I have it coming out of the southwest at 5 to 10. All right, so let's take our first break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Glad you're with us. Let's get started with some pictures. And we have some really good pictures over the past uh three or four days, and we'll get started with a flounder picture sent to us by Michael Turner. Now, I was just telling Jeff, we just don't know how big that ice chest is, but that, that is a healthy-looking flounder right there, Michael. Good job. I'm assuming that's a regular-sized ice chest, just for your sake, okay? Now, a big old red grouper, Jason Shingler. That is a healthy red grouper right there, folks. Beautiful day out there. Now, let's go over to freshwater. Look up here at Deer Point Lake. Uh, we went fly fishing, uh, Chris Brannon and had a, I had a group out there and they uh, no mosquitoes and yellow fly problems, so had a uh, had a good uh, good evening fly fishing right there at home by 10.30 that night. All right, here's Bobby Jones. Bobby, I met Bobby last year, uh, about this time last year. My mom was in a hospital with a broken hip and Bobby was, was laid up there and we started talking and told him how much he loved to fish and I told him to send me some pictures. So here he, he goes out. I got another picture coming up. That is a good looking red snapper. And Bobby, glad to see you doing well and glad to see you get back out there doing some fishing. All right, here's uh, Clay Denneke, or Marla, Marla Clark Denneke sent this picture in. Big old, big old catfish. Now here's another another picture of it. And the kids, uh, you know, that's the biggest one of those kids. You know, your kids were excited seeing a big, big fish there. Clay Denneke, good job. Uh, all right, now here, here's a nice, uh, this is Burnt Mill Creek. Uh, good job there. This is uh, Evan, and this is, uh, I don't know if they call them top water or whatever. That's a good looking fish right there out of Burnt Mill Creek. All right, here's uh, Emily McCormick. Emily's been on several times. She loves the outdoors. Uh, former Outdoor Club president. Always got a big smile on her face. And uh, it was like got a sail cap right there. Emily, good job. <laughs> All right, Caleb Pitt sent this picture in. Caleb is out fishing. He got a, had a party out fishing with him and uh, a nice mess of, of grouper and red grouper and uh, snapper. Now, check this out. 98-pound wahoo, Andy Brimer. Andy, uh, that is a good-looking wahoo right there. Boy, that's a healthy one right there, okay? We had a big one on there last week also. All right, moving on down, uh, Joe Sims went, uh, went out fishing. Uh, he, they had a good morning right there. Good job, Joe Sims. All right. 
a good friend, Marvin Ferran, class of 81. Marvin uh, is a good fisherman. He lives up in Tallahassee now. He's on the right side there. He, he works uh, for the Leon County Sheriff's Office and a uh, good outdoorsman and a good photographer and uh, yeah, obviously a good fisherman as always. Uh, good job, Marvin. All right, now listen, I have to speak this one in. This one's not uh, a crab. <laughs> this is an Alaskan uh, a king crab. This is sent to us. Uh, Dave, this is David May. I want to congratulate David and Tracy May took their 25th uh, anniversary uh, uh, trip to Alaska this past week. Congratulations on 25 years, Tracy and David. Are good folks there. I've had their uh, kids in school and a uh, good family. And their uh, David's dad was John May. He used to be a principal here. His brother is principal at Bay High. So a uh, good outdoors money and George going outdoors. I'm glad he went all the way to Alaska and did some outdoor stuff. All right. We don't have those creatures down here. Check this out. We're talking about sharks before the show, and uh, obviously. I've had several pictures sent like this. This was a uh, uh, Nancy got it halfway up, and he said, "That's a that's a good sized shark bite right there." Now you imagine that bite getting into your leg. Uh, that wouldn't have leave a lot right there. Uh, so I, I've had several pictures like this. This happened to us. Check this out. Let's go to the woods with an albino turkey. An albino turkey. This is right here in the Panhandle. Sent to us. That's a nice uh, flock of turkeys right there. But an albino sitting in there with them. All right. Uh, here, my buddy Powell Adams, Powell, former FWC officer. Uh, he had a he he loved catfishing. Now, he's old Calhoun County boy, so that goes in his blood right there. Good job, Powell. Trevor Benton, one of my former students. Trevor is a good outdoorsman. He's a good flounder. He's been doing a lot of floundering this past two weeks. This is a 23-inch. Uh, uh, got the night four last. Okay. Check this out. Now, this is Bobby Jones again on a, on a pretty fish. Bobby out there. Look how calm it is. Good job, Bobby. Uh, we have a couple of more. Uh, this is coming on down. This is, uh, let's see, it's Sean Pittman. I had I had several uh, kayak pictures, okay? Uh, Ernie Cabot sent this picture in. This is Brandon Donegger. Donegger. Uh, Ernie sent it in. First king caught off the pier. Pier fishing has been steady now. Check this out. Can y'all tell why that is? That's frog legs. That's Blake Sutherland out gigging frogs. So they're going to, they had some frog legs. Uh, I got another picture of it in a minute, but uh, I got some. Check this out. This is a good picture they ran up. This sort of shows you where the riptide is, where the current, see the waves coming in, but right, right between those arrows, you don't have any white cap. That means that water is going out pretty strong right there. So that a lot of times you can tell your riptide is right in there. So be careful uh, and try to, uh, educate, you know, our church and all other people coming in not not sure of it. Those riptides can be can be deadly, as we know. Okay, now here's a, let's get back to these frogs. There's 67 frogs. These guys. That's Tim Sutherland on the right. Blake. Uh, they had a good time, and uh, you know they had a big cookout, frog legs for supper, and our kayakers out there. Oh, you see how pretty calm it is. You can go out early in the morning uh, and uh, look at that group right there. All right. Here's Jennifer Barnett on a uh, Beautiful red snapper, beautiful color there. And a real quick picture here, uh, the boat is, that's the foot of the motor, and it was overheating. And he pulled it up, and lo and behold, there's a plastic bag caught in the intake valve right there where it takes in, you know, it takes it in with what happened. It just stopped getting water circulating in the engine. And that's why if you, anytime you see a plastic bag on water, you got to be careful, make sure you get it out. A lot of times, People don't throw these bags overboard. A lot of times they just sort of blow out when you take off fast and all. Okay. Brandon Barton, kayak fishing. That is a nice fish out of a kayak. Good job, Brandon. Got a couple more. Uh, we'll, okay, I want to give uh, right here, let's give our condolences on to Ryan, the Ryan Teal family. Ryan passed away this past weekend, and uh, Ryan had been on the show before. Ryan passed away after a long battle with brain cancer, and he was a uh, a nice young man, Michael Harris had set him up with Seasons of Hope and he got to do a buck of a lifetime. There's a Kansas buck right there in the middle. And uh, there was his mom, uh, uh, Car uh, Carrie, and I just want to send condolences from Panhandle Outdoors. And I want to just thank Michael Harris for spending so much time with uh, Ryan Teal of the Wee Wall. And uh, got to spend, uh, we went on a dove shoot with him. If you remember, we had a video with him uh, at a dove shoot at Mike Miller's place. A lot of people uh, contributed to to, uh, to Ryan and uh, our condolences on behalf of Panhandle Outdoors to the family, okay? All right, let's take this break and we'll be right back. Hi, 
Hi, welcome back. And let's start talking about scallops. Y'all have been uh, asking me all kind of questions about it, and I, I've got an answer for y'all today. We're going to give you the scallop re survey results. But first, let me say, uh, I didn't get to go on the uh, survey this year. I, I wasn't invited, but uh, they have been, uh, I have sent me the results, got them in last night, and, and uh, here are the results now for the 2013 scallop survey. First of all, let's go back to 2012. Remember those results were the, one of the weakest we've had in like the, almost 15, 20 years they've been doing it. Very, very uh, low results last year. Okay, with that being said, let's have a drum roll. And the 2013 results, we are going to have the double the amount of scholars we had last year. So that means that for 2013. So that means if you have been, if it took you four hours last year to get your limit, this year you should be able to do it in two hours. Okay. Now, uh, I got to think about that. I, I, I don't like to show a lot of repeat videos, but I'm going to show you the last, the last day of the season last year. That was a special scallop trip. Now, remember, we talked about how bad the scallops were, but there just not, were not a lot of them, and, and some people had trouble finding them, some people didn't. We, we were fortunate as we went, and we had, had some good times, but the last day wasn't hardly anybody out there, and Bill and Donna Allen went with us, and two of my granddaughters went, and I just, uh, it's a little seven or eight minute video and I want you to look at the size of these scallops that we found. Now, we put some music in this because we're underwater, have some good underwater photography. And I want to get everybody in the mood of scalloping because it's less than a week away that season's going to be opening up. And it looks like it's going to be a good season. So let's go ahead and start getting our, our brains thinking about scalloping and going underwater. And uh, we found them in shallow water that last day last year. It was a wonderful trip. So I want to let's look at this again and, uh, and maybe you'll start thinking about uh, going scalloping next week. All right, let's roll this, Jeff. All right, good morning, folks. We're down at St. Joe Boat Ramp. Maddie, McKenzie, Donna Allen. Bill's up there in the truck. He's going to back us down. This is our final, it's the last weekend of scallop season. We're going, we may not get a lot, but we're going out and have a great day. We've got wind coming out of the north, northeast about eight. Donna, are you excited? Yes. <laughs> Girls, y'all excited? Woo! Maddie's real excited. She's reading a book. <laughs> okay, we're down outdoors, scalloping in St. Joe Bay.
Folks, we've wrapped up our final scalloping trip of the year 2012, and Bill, we've had a good trip, real good trip. I, what, a lot of work. What was amazing, I don't know if you can see the size, these are huge scallops. Palm size. Palm, look at that, Bill's got a big hand, put it on my hand, my hand's smaller. Look how big those are, huge scallops. And we got a whole five gallon bucket full right here, and then we got, we got another bag full, that's our last bag. Donna, which one of these was the last scallop? You remember? The last scallop. The last scallop. Oh, it was this one right here. That was the last scallop That's that the we got. The last scallop of 2012, right there. That was it. Not any of them deeper than two and a half, three feet of water. Now, I don't know if you heard that. We were in, two, we were in this deep of water, folks. This deep of water. And uh, clear water. And they seem to have a pattern where they're sort of in line. Did y'all pick that up? Mm -hmm. We were talking about that earlier. And I, I can't think of a better way for the, the first day of fall is today, and a better way to start off the fall season and do, do what we did. That's a big one. Maybe that's the last one. Well, that's the last one. Yeah, maybe that's it. These are huge scallops. You know, uh, we had a great time, Bill. But yeah, it's a great way to end the scallop season. I think it's the way we started it, wasn't it? Didn't we go out on the first weekend? Yeah, we did. We had a great time. Girls, y'all have a good time? Mm -hmm. Maddie, you have a good time? Kenzie, you have a good time? Yep. yep. Kenzie is the scallop queen. Scallop queen. There we go. Maddie the scallop. What's Maddie? She's a date girl. All right. We wrapped up 2012 season. Hey, honey. That's a lovely headdress you have. This is what there. the queen, scallop queens wear on their head. Uh-huh. Just ask 
Mackenzie about That's it. why you don't see very many of them on TV. That's why I'm there. <laughs> right. Mackenzie and I are scallop queens. Just huge. Uh, welcome back. You ready to go scalloping now? All right, I'll be next Monday to open up. Now, let's take a look at our fishing game forecast today, brought to us by Mark Cowart of Edgewater Beach Realty at 832-6000. Our times today are 233 to 433 this morning, and tonight, uh, well, actually this afternoon, 302 to 502. All right, that's our times brought to us by Mark Cowart. Quick email. Uh, from, this is from uh, our good buddy, uh, Mike Perdue, one of the best trout fishermen in, in the whole southeast. Okay, hey, Winston. Enjoy the show. I watch it near about every morning. I went down and fished a Big Ben Saltwater Classic Tournament. That's a big tournament down there off Tallahassee. Uh, I've been fishing that tournament since the early 90s. I finally won the Speckled Trout Division this weekend at 6.7 pounds. It was, uh, it was 29 inches long. Folks, that's a big one right there. Uh, I, did, uh, I caught it in St. Joe Bay near one of your spots in Eagle Harbor. I'm glad I showed Mike that spot. The wind uh, really blew Friday out of the west and then Saturday out of the east and southeast. The bay is full of LYs and the best I've seen in years. Lots of big trout in the bay. So uh, fish that falling tide and results. On, if you want to see the results, go to Big Ben Saltwater Classic. Uh, your friend, Mike Perdue. Mike, thank you for sending that. Congratulations on winning. That is a big trout there. Mike is a really good fisherman. Look, we're going to start closing things up. Now, listen. Uh, he, remember what he said. He, I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to scallop next week in the morning and, and trout fish in the afternoon. Okay, so go ahead and make that your plans. What you're going to be doing around July 4th and all. All right, got to get out of here. Got a big show lined up tomorrow. Don't want to miss tomorrow's show. Let's. Uh, you do something good for somebody today, and you just have a great day. And God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors. <laughs>